Hi guys, welcome back to the Getter Breed channel. My name's Trevor and I'm going to talk you through how to make some cider at home. Okay, there's five simple steps to making cider. Step one, we're going to wash the apples. Step two, chop up the apples. Step three, blitz up the apples. And then step four, we're going to put the apples in the press to press the apple juice out. Step five, transfer the juice into the fermenter pitch our yeast, then we're going to let it ferment for about two weeks. I have 20 kg of apples here. Uh, the first step, what we're going to do is wash them. Okay, I've got my bucket of water here, just fresh water from the top. Grab yourself your apples and just dip them in. Just, you could maybe pour them in and make it a bit quicker, but uh, we will just throw a few in. We'll give them a, a good rinse, we wash around with the hands. Let's just make sure you get all this, this stuff from the centers and the tops. Just as long as you're, you get all the pieces of dirt off. See any bad ones, just give them a good rub with your thumbs. But they're pretty good apples because they've been hand picked rather than windfalls. So they've been up on the tree when I've picked them off rather than being on the ground. So once you've washed your apples, you take your apples, take them out, you can either, you can cut them in quarters, but because these are quite big apples, I'll probably cut them into six pieces rather than four to make it easier to, that for us to blitz up. So just chop them anyway really. Uh, look out for any wee bad bits. If you see some bits that you don't like, just take them out. Doesn't really matter about the seeds. The seeds are fine in the apples. You can put them through, no problem. These apples are looking pretty good. So, they're quite tough apples. I actually like to let apples ripen a bit before, after they're picked, so they're, they're a bit softer to cut up and pulp. You're probably wondering where you get your apples from. You might be lucky to have an apple tree at home or do what I do and go to the local orchard and pick your own apples. Uh, the best time to pick apples would be say September to October time. The, the orchard that I go to mostly grow um, Bramley apples which are great big apples and then if they also grow little crab apples. The Bramley apples are quite sour and then the little crab apples are a, much sweeter and it brings a nice balance between the two when you add them together. You can also go to your local shop and buy some sweet apples like galas and, or any other sweet apples really and then you can make another, make a, a blend of them all together. Once you chop up your apples, put them into your, your blitzing bucket. Then chop up some more to fill the bucket about halfway before we start blitzing them. Once you've got your bucket half filled, we're now going to blitz them. You can get this bucket with the pulping blade and the lid uh, to get it brewed. Uh, once you, you put your lid and attach a drill to it, well it takes a couple of minutes to pulp. Okay, so now we're going to transfer the pulp into the press. You can buy these presses and get her brewed. We've got 6 litres, 12 litres and 18 litres. What's uh, this one? This one is a 12 litre. Personally, if you're doing a whole lot of apples, I would recommend getting an 18 litre. Uh, if you're doing just a minimum amount of apples, I'd say maybe a 6 litre. And if you're doing in between, I would say a 12 litre. We're making a, a 5 litre batch of cider so the 12 litre press will be more than enough for that so we're going to transfer it in now as you can see you can either use a spoon or you can just wipe it down with your hand which makes it much easier I could do with putting the press a little higher so the juice can run into the jug or maybe get a smaller jug we're going to blitz another batch of this to then we will press the first batch of juice out Mm -hmm. 
So what you do is get your bag, pull it up, and then fold it down around the bar. Best thing to do is not to fill it up too much or it'll get stuck in the, the screw bit. Then you get your two halves that come with the press, like that, the fit round the middle of the bar. Give it a wee jiggle around to make it fit. So we have uh, distance blocks that we sell here at Gitter Brood. Also, you normally I like to use four, so you put four on. Uh, I'll do it this way today. I like to put them like this, so you have more distance to press. Normally you put them on their side, but if you do it like this, it, it gives you more, you don't have to screw down so far, it makes it a bit easier to press. You put, you wanna just make sure you've got them nice and tight so they don't, they don't fold in on you. Put your bar in and just keep twisting it down until all the juice is pressed out of the apples that we have crushed. You can take it out and bring it around so you don't have to keep going around, but it's sort of a bit quicker when we do it this way. I mean, that's my everyday face when I'm trying to get some work done. <laughs> the family have told me plenty of times that I did. We have one and a, half just a litre and a half already can take a bit of time just waiting as you can see when me putting the the, the distance blocks the vertical way down um, this is the benefit of it you don't have to be a way down in the the press and you don't have to use a whole lot of distance blocks it makes things a little easier and you, you don't have to screw down as much. Um, you can keep going down for a while if, you, if you've got the time, but if you've got a whole lot of apples to, to, to crush, sometimes it's better just to press them, get it out, go again. But um, if you if you can leave that for 15 minutes, it'll let you, it'll go, it'll go loose and it'll let you do it again for an hour few spins. Once you have finished, the juice has stopped and your press has pressed as far as you can get it, uh, we're going to remove all the components again, remove out the pulp cake. If you're lucky enough to live in a farm or you, you, you know a local farmer, you can give your pulp to the farmers. The chickens will eat it or cows, pigs, anything like that. Or you can either put it in a compost heap, give yourself some nice soil for next year. We'll, we'll need to repeat the process so we can fill at least two of these jugs to put in the damage on. Once that process is complete we have our jugs filled and we're going to transfer in the fermenter first we'll pour a wee glass okay so this is the fresh apple juice you have to remember it's lovely fresh and crisp let's have a wee taste oh it's tangy also if you don't want to go through this whole process you can also go to your local supermarket and buy uh, apple juice from concentrated it has to be from concentrated just add the juice to a fermenter add yeast and you've got apple juice as well i personally like to do it with the fresh apples because it get the, gets me and the kids a day out picking the fresh apples from the orchard i get a, a day with the kids and my wife uh, chopping apples and pressing them and to be honest that you can't get any better results than fresh apple juice from your apples. Let's get this into the fermenter. Everything's been sanitized, washed, as you can see, a wee bit of sanitizer there, and we'll just pour that into our bucket. Carefully get your jug and fill up the ferment, the fermenter, demi John, fermenter, bucket, it depends on how much you press. Taste it. 
take your time not to spill any so we'll leave that wee bit in the jugger there's a little bit of sediment at the bottom uh, it wouldn't harm to put it in but i'm just going to leave that out the, hopefully it'll clear quicker jug number two uh same again easily pour it in going down that's plenty in the demi john as you want to leave a bit of headroom for what it needs during fermentation okay now we're going to add yeast to our apple juice uh just a heads up there's actually yeast in apple skins so this if you were to put the, the damage on bong and the airlock on there it'll just ferment itself it will take a bit of time but you do cause uh, have a risk of it spoiling because that yeast hasn't went quick enough um we do have a selection of different yeast uh every cedar that i normally do i would use an mo2 cedar yeast which is must have like a clearing uh adjective in there as well because every cedar that i've made has it's made it beautifully clear i've also made a cedar from nottingham yeast it left it like apple juice and it stopped fermenting at about 1010 it did i bottled it and left it in the shed for like a year and it was one of the best ciders that i've ever tasted it was so clear bubbly crisp okay today we're going to be trying a new yeast ay4 from our friends a b yeast we're just going to give it a sanitize you won't need the whole 11.5 grams in here you probably just used half a packet maybe half a packet a wee bit too much as well but um half a packet will be grand for today so we'll give it a wee spray down Got a tear open and we'll just give it a wee pour in probably like half a packet and that should do it fine as it's only five liters of juice just going to sanitize our bung and our bubbler pop that in take a we'll spray some uh sanitized water just into the bubbler just until it's halfway from both once the yeast starts activating, it'll create CO2 and push it out the airlock. Okay, that's pretty much us done. Um, we need to leave this now to 18 to 24 degrees. We, we now have a little bit left over. We're gonna go and take a hydrometer reading to tell us how much sugar's in the juice. And then after two weeks time, once it stops bubbling, and stops fermenting we'll take another hydrometer reading to let us know what percentage of alcohol is in the cider there's you can also use Campton tablets to kill off any wild bacteria or the yeast that's on the apples but you'll you have to wait 24 hours after adding the Campton tablet to pitch the yeast because if you add it too quick it'll kill the yeast that you add personally i don't use them um I've never had, I've been doing cider for two years now and I've never had any issues. That's how easy it is to make cider at home. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. Happy brewing.